The kingdom of God is the only message Jesus preached. Jesus never preached any other message. He never preached faith. He never preached prosperity. He never preached even the cross. He never preached born again. As a matter of fact, Jesus only mentioned born again once. And he never mentioned it to a crowd of people. It was a private conversation. He never preached deliverance. He just delivered people from demons. He never preached healing. He simply healed people. He never preached the resurrection. He simply resurrected. So something is wrong here. So the question is, what did Jesus preach? What is the Bible about? Write this down, number one. The Bible is about a king. Now that may sound simple to you, but that's very important because most of you were born in democracy. In democracy, there is no king. And a king is not a president, nor a prime minister. And most of you, all you knew all your life was a president or a prime minister. The Bible is not about a president, it's about a king. A king is completely opposite to a president. So when you open the Bible, you are not confronting a politician as you know one. Now a king is a politician, but he's opposite to a president or a prime minister. Secondly, the Bible is about a royal family. Write that down. What is the Bible about? Okay, listen carefully. Because kings that have children are called a royal family. You are sitting next to one of them right now. Amen. The Bible is not about subjects that worship a king. It's about children of a king. You are a royal family. Thirdly, the Bible is about a kingdom. A kingdom is not a religion. Write the word kingdom down, very important word. The Bible is about a what? A kingdom. A kingdom is a country. So the Bible is about a country. Because the Bible is about a king and a kingdom. So the terminologies in the Bible are all kingdom terminologies. The Bible is about a kingdom. If you don't understand a kingdom, you cannot understand the Bible. Fourthly, the Bible is about a government. What did I say? This is why a lot of people don't get healed when they pray for healing. They treat the Bible as if it is a religious book. The Bible is about a government. It is about a government of a kingdom ruled by a king. And fifthly, the Bible is about a colonization project. Only kingdoms colonize. Colonization is simply the extension of a king's influence over a foreign territory. Colonization is the expansion of a kingdom to a distant territory. And that is the essence of God's will for this planet. God's will was to extend the kingdom of heaven to earth. To make heaven a 
to make earth, rather, a colony of heaven. That is the entire project of the Bible. God's interest was not to get you to heaven. Take a deep breath. And that's where you got it wrong. You are not from earth. <laughs> you are from heaven. You were sent to earth to colonize earth for heaven. You are a heavenly being living in an earthly body on a planet called earth. If you don't understand that, you won't understand the Bible. So God's intent was to colonize earth with the kingdom of heaven. At least the point number six, write it down. Everybody say dominion. dominion. Write the word dominion down, please. I did some research for you. And the word dominion that Jesus used and that is written in the Genesis story is this word rada. Some of you pastors never saw this before. The word dominion means is the word rada. It's pronounced rada in Hebrew. Rada. That's the word for dominion. Let them have rada. That's the word that's used. When you translate the word rada into English, here's the word that comes out. It's the word kingdom. Now you see where it comes from. Let them have kingdom. The Aramaic word is the word mamlakak. Same word, mamlakak. Yeah, rada, mamlakak. It means kingdom. So the first thing God gave you to do is what? Kingdom. Let them have kingdom over the earth. That means let them be the kings that dominate the earth. Kingdom is two words put together. King and dom. Dom is dominion. King, dominion, kingdom. Kingdom means the person that dominates the territory. You are a king. The word dominion also means sovereignty. This is a very important word. It means kingdom sovereignty. Let these children have sovereignty over the earth. That means whatever happens here is your responsibility. Sovereignty is a powerful word. It means you are totally responsible for what happens in your territory. So you can never blame God for poverty or broken marriages or incest or gang warfare or drugs. God ain't got nothing to do with that. That's your problem. You created that. You're the sovereign ruler here. Every problem on earth is your fault. <laughs> the word dominion also means to reign, to rule. It means that you are a king over your territory. So actually, you are a nation of ignorant kings. <laughs> we don't know who we are. And we're living like slaves. The word dominion in the New Testament is the the Greek word basilia. It means the same thing. It means kingdom. It means royalty, sovereign rule. Same word. Let them have dominion over the earth. Let them have royal power. Let them reign. So you were sent to earth to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. That is very simple. If you don't understand that, you'll never understand the Bible. The Bible is the constitution of your government. It was given to you to use to execute dominion on earth. The Bible is a law book. That's why it's called the law of God. All countries are built on law. <laughs> the 
That's why grace can never replace law. No country is built on grace. Getting quiet now, see? You, see, you, you don't understand the kingdom. Jesus never preached grace. Now it's quiet again. Okay, let me show you. <laughs> see, you don't read the Bible, that's all. When Jesus started his ministry, he was 30 years old. And his first statement was, I did not come to destroy the law. Yes. Yes, sir. Oh. But I came to what? Enforce it. That's Matthew chapter 5. That's in your Bible. Read that for yourself. Don't look at me like that. Read the Bible. And then he says, if anyone teaches anyone to disobey the law, he is least in my kingdom. Oh boy. That means if you teach people not to keep God's law, you are the least in his kingdom. You are nothing. Because countries are built on law. And then he said, if any man teaches others to keep the law, he is called great in the kingdom, the country of God. So please write this down. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, and his intent, producing a citizenship of people who reflect the king's culture, nature, values, and morals. So a kingdom is literally a country where the citizens reflect the king's lifestyle. That's why we wear neckties in 95 degrees. In a kingdom, you actually dress like the king. You eat what the king eats. You speak the language of the king. So all kingdoms have a government, territory. It's a country, a nation, it's a people identified with the sovereign. A kingdom is a nation of people ruled by a king. That's a kingdom. A kingdom is literally a community of people with distinct culture. A kingdom is a nation under a king's rule. So when you claim to follow Jesus, I'm going to get in trouble now, you have no rights. Oh boy, see, I told you that a kingdom is opposite to a democracy. You cannot say you follow Jesus and then claim you have your own rights. Mm-hmm. <laughs>